Hello, welcome to Youth in Action. In today's program, we have Robert Mtange. Let's hear more about what he does. Robert, welcome to the program. Give us a backstory about yourself. Thank you. My name is Robert from Kisumu, mm -hmm. a place called Naira. Mm -hmm. um, I venture into agribusiness, mm -hmm. mainly uh, beekeeping and uh, poultry. But my main value chain is um, beekeeping okay. because of the interest I have in it. So I've been doing uh, beekeeping for three years now. And uh, it's a good venture that uh, I would advise youths to do. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So how come you decided to venture into agriculture? Okay. You know, when I came out of college, I knew that I was going to get some formal job and you know, whatever youths uh, perceive about uh, the formal jobs, like when you get out of college, you will get a big job mm -hmm. and you drive some big vehicles over there. Sometimes it, it becomes mm -hmm. like a dream because okay. you get out of college and uh, you don't get that job immediately like you expected. So when I was at home, I asked myself, what will I do and uh, how am I going to get money? And I started doing some other things to help me get money. I uh, was doing extension services uh, related to the course that I'd studied. I did fisheries and aquatic science. So mm -hmm. whatever money I was getting, I was saving. And uh, as I was saving, I had uh, a vision that when I get some certain amount, I'll start my own business. So when I got like around 50,000, I asked myself, what am I going to do with this money? Mm -hmm. And uh, a friend of mine told me about uh, poultry farming. And he told me that poultry has good money. You can try it. And I said like, I don't have any modern knowledge about poultry farming. He told me that, uh, don't worry, I'll teach you because I've been doing this for quite a while. And uh, there are some organization that offers training to youths. So I'll link you to these uh, organizations that offer training about poultry farming. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how my venture started. Wow. Yeah. So let's talk about, you've, you've said that you had a different training, which was fishery and aquatic, aquatic science. And aquatic science yeah. So when you got out of campus mm -hmm. and you looked for jobs, how was that experience for you? Most, most young people are in the same shoes. Mm -hmm. How did you bring it up? To your parents maybe that maybe you want to venture into something else because of lack of the job actually there's a time i thought that i was going to get some job in a company in mombasa mm. that i thought this is now the kind of job that i wanted we were called for an interview when there were only six people and uh, i knew that uh, an interview that you attend and you don't find so many people you have higher chances of getting the job I didn't get the job, I said no. I have to look for something else to do. Okay. Yeah. So and that's uh, when uh, uh, my passion in farming mm -hmm. came in. Because okay. initially I was doing some small uh, farming mm -hmm. and I said like I want to do it in large scale because if I do it large scale it will lead me somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Well, you've spoken about poultry and uh, beekeeping, yeah? And how did you understand the science of beekeeping? Is it something you also trained for as you trained for the poultry one? Actually, for beekeeping, uh, the same same organizations that I used to attend their meetings, mm -hmm. we were able to get uh, a clear picture about bee, fee, bee farming because mm -hmm. uh, actually it's beekeeping. Okay. Mm. Beekeeping uh, is one of the untapped agribusiness area in Kenya. Because you know what people think about bees. Because when you approach the African bee, they'll sting you. Mm. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So I said, this thing that people don't want to do, it's what I want to venture in. 
because I like doing what not everyone is doing. I like being unique there. Okay. So I said, like in my area, most youth don't uh, do beekeeping. And I said that this is not the right thing that I should be doing. Because okay. it's not flooded. And I went for a training. So as I went for the training, I got um, more information from the people who have been dealing with bees for a, a very long time. Mm. And I was also asking other people questions about bees, how do you do this and that. Yeah. Mm. So that's how I created interest. Then there's a time I was in a meeting with the Australians and uh, this guy gave us the real picture about beekeeping that if you do like a number of hives and you sell your honey at this amount you'll get this money and I said like, why am I going to look for a formal job yet I have my own job here I can create my own job mm. yeah, and that's how I started it Agribusiness among the youth is currently taking root in society. Yeah. Yet there are other young people who are still shunning it, thinking that uh, white collar job is the thing. What can you tell such a person? I should tell youth to stop wasting time. If you have the opportunity right now, because mm. uh, age will not wait for you. Okay. Yeah. So there are some things you can do as as you're waiting for that uh, formal job. I'm not telling them not to go for the formal job. Uh, actually, you can still do your agriculture part and still do your, your formal job. Mm. The formal job will help you to get capital to run your, your business. Mm. So it's still okay, but don't wait for the formal job. Yet there are other things you can do. Mm. They can venture into agriculture. Actually, right now in Africa, mm. we have an issue of food security. And uh, if you keep poultry, you'll get... Uh, you get money, it's got a common economic value. The beekeeping, it uh, gives people jobs. And uh, the medicinal part of bees, the other things you can get from bees, not just honey, like uh, you can get the venom, it's medicinal for those people who are suffering from arthritis. Wow. Yeah. Then uh, there's pollen, it's for nutritional value. It's high protein. Actually, the the the, pro, the pollen from bees has good protein. It can be used to making babies uh, feeds, mm -hmm. and uh, honey also. It's used to make medicine. You can make soaps from it. Mm -hmm. You mix with wax. So, in uh, in beekeeping, you can do so many value additions, and you still get your money. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So it's uh, like. Uh, your own job creation. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So in the field that you're in, the beekeeping and the poultry uh, rearing, what activities are you involved in at uh, that level? Uh, actually, right now I'm still um, concentrating on production, okay. normally on poultry. I do hatching. I sell, uh, I do uh, three different types of, of poultry. I do them, I keep them I keep the local chicken, I keep the improved and the broilers because mm. yeah, of the different uh, market interest. Yeah. Uh, the bees, I do the African bees because mm -hmm. of the honey production they give. Okay. Yeah, like uh, Actually one hive can uh, give me a minimum of 10 uh, kgs. So you can imagine if you have like uh, 20 hives and you sell your honey per kg at 900 shillings or a thousand shillings, you've That's got money. money. Yeah. And uh, the harvest is not just once. Mm. If there's a good nectar flow, you can harvest three times in a year. Mm. So that's a good income. Yeah. Yeah, so many youths can invest in this. Mm. They should not fear bees. That's true. You You're speaking of fearing mm. bees, but how mm. can one approach a bee in a simple moment? Mm. Most mm. of us are afraid of them because of that. Actually, you, you've heard of this case where um, some people tame wild animals. Uh. Um, they've, um, they've this feature called the cognitive image. Like um, bees, uh, when you approach them all the time, like during inspection, they'll get used to you. They'll know you. Mm. Yeah. You know, this person always comes here. With okay. the time, they'll not be that aggressive. Mm. When you go to that wild bee in the bush there, you approach it, they'll attack you. 
-hmm. But the ones that you keep in the hive, they know that uh, this is uh, our keeper. He's always here with us, so it's not that aggressive. Mm -hmm. And you don't even uh, disturb them. But uh, to, to prevent those uh, issues of uh, bee attack, you keep them away from homesteads, mm -hmm. yeah, from animals, actually when they sting your cow or horse or donkey, they can die from just a sting. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is the importance of the work that you do? Actually, it's a source of employment. Okay. Actually, when I start beekeeping, mm -hmm. you can't do it alone. You'll have to have farm help because uh, actually, you see, for, for the beehive, mm -hmm. it's very heavy. Actually, during uh, harvesting, you can't do it alone. You need someone to help you. When you employ someone, you create a job for them. And as a source of nutrition, like I said, and a source of medicine, and uh, a source of income also. Mm, yeah, that's so. true. So what goals did you set as you started mm -hmm. and where are you at right now? And before I started this farming, I said like when I reach somewhere, I'll be able to, to employ more people. Mm -hmm. Initially I started with one person. Now I, I train other people, we work together. Mm -hmm. And I said I'll train more people in, the, in my village, even my, my cousins, my friends, if they're interested, mm -hmm. I can train them because mm -hmm. I don't want to grow alone. I said, like, uh, even in three years or four years, I'll be able to inspire, like, even more than 20 youths mm -hmm. to be doing the same thing that I'm doing. Yeah, because, you know, these things you can do with them at a certain age. Mm -hmm. When it reaches some age, you need to retire from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I started this, I focused on production. I said, like, uh, after a year or two, I'll do large scale. Mm -hmm. And um, as I grew, in this, uh, I learned that there are so, so many other things you can do in it. Like uh, I speak before about uh, value addition, mm -hmm. and I said if I can be able to produce quality product that can reach the market, different markets, mm -hmm. and like when I walk uh, around the country, I find my my products in the store. So it's not about just production, but also value addition. Speaking of goals, uh, you mentioned why you ventured into farming mostly was to find a job for yourself. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. How has that also worked for you in the long run? Mm. It has worked for me. Like, um, it's money that uh, I was looking for. Mm -hmm. I can't lie about that. Mm -hmm. And through my ventures, actually I started beekeeping. I went for the trainings. And I said, like, if I do beekeeping alone, I'll be waiting for a period of time to get that money. Mm -hmm. I can do other things like I construct beehives, mm -hmm. I sell to farmers who are interested, mm -hmm. get some cash out of it. And um, um, I'd gone broad, like uh, not doing only beekeeping, but also helping people. Like somebody will tell you that uh, there's, a, there's a bee colony attacking me in my home. It is in the ceiling board. I also do bee removals. Mm -hmm. I do propagations for people mm -hmm. at a fee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like you can transfer bees from where, wherever a farmer doesn't want it to a different location. Okay. Yeah. Do, do you adapt some of those bees that uh, you find Yeah, if, there? if someone fears the bees, you don't want them, I take them to my sanctuary. Oh, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. You're their savior. Yeah, I'm their point. savior. Actually, uh, people, people should not kill bees because they're, they are the reason why we have our food. Actually, the, the grains we are eating, they are like 95% pollinators worldwide. Bees are our greatest pollinators and they are the reason why we get our food. Yeah. So we should embrace uh, keeping the bees as a source of income and also for environmental conservation okay. yeah. and uh, are there any other investments you're working on aside from farming or it's just solely farming that you're working on mm, currently it's just farming mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah 
And so what was the perception of your family and friends when you told them, now I'm going into farming and I want you guys to support mm. me? Mm. Actually, I remember there's a place uh, I'd put uh, a beehive. Mm. Actually, it wasn't my, my intention to put that beehive there. A customer had told me that uh, I need a beehive in three days' time. And I'd go on and set it somewhere in the farm there to dry. So within three days, I found bees inside there. And I said, like, this place is, is good for bees. They can adapt here. And I put bees there. So it took like two to three months. No one would see it. So my big bro was, uh, was walking around the compound and he saw that beehive there and he ran. He came to me. He told me, man, this thing that you put here is very dangerous. Do you know bees kill people? Are you able to go there by yourself? And I told him, let's go. We went near the beehive, we walked around. I told them that this is not, this is what you're supposed to do and this is not what you're supposed to do. Mm. And he said, like, you can live with these things. I told him, yes. But initially they feared it. They said, like, uh, somebody said that, uh, I mean, child. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> yeah, I keep bees and bees... Uh, some people perceive them to be so dangerous. You saw like this uh, guy when he and she come in a na nyuki, mm. na nyuki na mamdu mkono. So like they've got that perception that bees are useful like this sorcery. Yeah. I told him that is barbaric. Don't think of bees that way. Okay. So the reason why you are eating and you don't know indirectly. Sure. Yeah. And uh, how fulfilling is the work? You speak so passionately about it. So how fulfilling is it? It's giving me cash. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, actually right now I don't uh, consume sugar. Mm. Yeah. I use my own product. Okay. Yeah. There are different circles that support farmers in their day-to-day -day activities. Do you get that support and how do you view the help that they offer farmers? Actually I've heard of the circles supporting farmers. Mm -hmm. But um, I've not uh, been so much interested in them. But uh, with my youth groups, we created something called the YSLA, where we are able to do our own savings. Uh, as members, we can borrow from our savings, and we do our ventures, and there are those uh, do's and don'ts of the, of the group. Okay. Yeah, there are those rules that govern how we, we run our finances mm. and uh, that one has been helping us so mm. much. Mm. Yeah. And how has it uh, improved your farming mm. since you started it? Actually, sometimes you, you, you won't have that capital but you need somewhere to go and get the money. Mm. Like, let's say you you found a hoard uh, of 40 beehives and maybe you didn't have that capital to start. Mm -hmm. You can go there, you borrow some cash after you've uh, executed your your tender, you pay it back. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the good thing about, uh, about about it, they give you the loan at a low interest. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're much comfortable. That's true. Yeah. And uh, how do you navigate the challenges that you meet while doing your job? Mm -hmm. Are there any challenges and how do you manage them? Mm, challenges mostly is on uh, actually about uh, beekeeping during the drought. Actually, we've got a very prolonged drought and bees have really suffered because they don't get nectar. And uh, the drought also, you have to provide water for them. Mm -hmm. You have to feed them also. Yeah. So that's the most expensive, expensive part of it, but it's not that expensive because it's not an everyday thing that will happen. Yeah. That's the, the most challenge. Then another thing, um, Bees, um, bees make their honey, and it's got a very good scent, actually, for other animals can attack your beehive, like the ants, but we are able to, to prevent that. Mm. The honey badger can come and destroy your beehive, and uh, when your equipment is destroyed, that's uh, a loss. You need to look for capital to make another one. That's true. Uh, another challenge has been to market the the product that you make, you produce, because actually you see like in um, honey production, there's been, um, it's a mostly adulterated product in the market. 
So, you know, sometimes you'll go to the market, uh, a customer will ask you, Kushwe, would you ongeza skari? I'm a skari in Guru. Yeah, so, yeah. like, uh, you need to understand your customer. Kama wini mtu wakua kasirika, utakasirika na muambia, like, anakuambia ajume. Kama utakienda na ya. Yeah, so those are the challenges too, to bring this thing to the market for for the farmers to, for the consumers to, uh, to embrace it. Actually, the, these people who believe only on whatever they find in the stores, in the supermarket. supermarket So how do you deal with these challenges? Mm. Mm. The challenges, they have to be there, but there are also ways I try like uh, selling my, my products locally. Mm. I tell people to test it and to compare it with whatever they've been using before. But now I see them embracing the products. They know it works. Mm. So, actually, in every business, you must have a challenge, but you always find a way to, to overcome it. Okay. Yeah. Even though they, it's very hard to convince some people, but with the time, they just adapt it. Mm. Yeah. Then, uh, in the other venture of uh, poultry, mm. diseases has been uh, a challenge. Also. Sometimes you find uh, you're vaccinated, but the, that uh, strain of, of the virus uh, is stronger than the vaccine in that time. You may be vaccinated later than you, you knew. And you find your, you find your stock dead. Yes. That one is, uh, is bringing you down financially. Sure. Yeah, because sure. you expect like uh, at a certain time of the month, you'll sell these ones, you get some money, and if they dead, they're dead, you can't sell them. It's a loss, mm. but you have to cope up with that. Okay. Yeah. For the challenges of my, my stock dying, I involve uh, county veterinary officers. Okay. Uh, they have to come and do some sampling and uh, some checkups from time to time. Yeah. Mm. So where do you see yourself in future doing this job? Mm. Actually, in the next three years, I want to be doing uh, I want to be selling my products countrywide, wow. yeah. mm -hmm. and even uh, outside the country if possible. Okay. Yeah. So seeing that uh, you're a young person mm -hmm. doing such an amazing work in the farming industry, mm -hmm. what advice do you have to other young people waiting on white collar jobs mm -hmm. that often are scarce, but there is also a gap in farming industry? What can you tell such a person? I'll tell my fellow youths, Ukulima Siushamba. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kulima ina leta, ina leta pesa, na pia ina keep busy. Uh, as much as it keeps you busy, food security, utapata chakula, you'll be, actually you have to be the first consumer of your product. And when you consume your own product, usama te nikuwa nanja, nikuwa na chakula. And you're able to feed your, your family, you're able to get some income, utanunu wangu, utanunu wangu, Unaweza kujenga nyumba, utaka ni gari ndo unataka, at a certain age you'll be able to buy. Thank you so much Robert, I have loved the information you've given me about bees, I will try not to be afraid of them, yeah? Ukulima si ushamba, as a young person embrace other gaps in the field, do not rely on one job that may be scarce or may end up failing you in life. This has been Youth in Action. I am Nyangweso Grenis. See you next time. This is the way to do it. This is the way to do it. This is the way.